What you're seeing here is the fantastic level of construction being sold to the Chinese people. And what you're seeing here are high school children reenacting the assassination of Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. <laughs> and laughing about it. Why do I talk about these things? Why is it important for me to show you what's going on in China and be critical of the bad parts of Chinese society, specifically those brought upon by the bad governance and bad policies of the Chinese Communist Party? Well, it's because it's my duty. I never set out to be a critic of the Chinese Communist Party. I was really forced into that position. You see, when I first started my videos, as many of you know, you can go back in my catalog, I've got over a thousand of them. I was very positive about China, very happy to share my everyday life and all the interesting adventures I was having because you know what? China is an adventure, still is to this day, but China has changed. And China has changed drastically under the leadership of Xi Jinping, specifically. But of course, I changed too. And various circumstances forced me into my current situation. We all know that made in China usually means made to last. Just kidding. If you want to know if the product you're buying is going to last more than a few uses, you need Cultivate. It's a completely free plugin that takes the sneaky mystery out of buying goods on websites like Amazon, which purposefully obscure where a product and brand are from. Did you know that over 50% of the sellers on Amazon are actually in China? Yeah, it's kind of hard to differentiate. With Cultivate, you get complete transparency and can make proper informed decisions when making your purchases. Not only will you know where your product and brand is from, You'll also be given an alternative, including cheaper and local ready to pick up alternatives nearby. Not only that, Cultivate also gives you cash back on your purchases. All you have to do is go to wecultivate.us forward slash SZA or SZA, depending on what you prefer. Don't get caught out. Make sure you know where the products you're buying come from. And now back to the show. In the fairly early days of doing YouTube videos, I made a video asking and basically pleading my audience to stop asking politically sensitive questions because I would get them a lot in the comment section. People would ask me about, you know, what about Tibet or what about Tiananmen Square, the Tiananmen Square massacre? And at that time, living in China, making videos about China, I knew that if I spoke about anything politically sensitive, that would really be the end of me. It'd be the end of my adventure, it'd be the end of my stay in China, potentially land me in legal trouble or get detained, something like that. And so I was absolutely terrified of covering these subjects. And so I asked my audience, just please don't ask me these questions. But somebody left a comment under that video, a comment that turned out to be true. And that is, you can ignore politics all you want, but politics will not ignore you. So that leads me to where I am today. I saw a lot of bad stuff in China. There's a lot of terrible things I witnessed in my early days in China that I refused to talk about. Things to do with human trafficking and the way a lot of the poorer people are treated in China terribly. And of course, other things like, you know, animal abuse and things like that, which, you know, that's par for the course in China. But, you know, I saw some absolutely terrible things, which in hindsight, I wish I had documented properly and spoken about properly. But... In order to ensure that my adventure did not come to an end, I avoided talking about or even thinking about these things. Very selfish, I know, but you have to understand that I was 25 at the time when I got to China. I was in a different, you know, era of my life, you know, in the prime of my life, having fun. I was just only interested in the pursuit of uh, a good time. I'm sure everybody out there knows what I'm talking about. You know, we grow up, we mature. And, uh, well, I was also escaping a bad situation. And without a good, stable country to go home to, 
you know, it's almost impossible for someone like myself to find a good job in South Africa and the failing economy and all the other nonsense that's going on there. I really didn't want to jeopardize the opportunities that were in front of me. So I didn't talk about these bad things. But as time went on, certain cracks started to appear. You see, it's all good and well not to talk politics in China, because we all know, hey, you talk about politics, you talk about religion. There's certain things you don't talk about in China, because if you do, it's a fast track out of there. You're going to get into a lot of trouble. You'll be silenced. It's just proven fact. It happens. You, If you want to try to criticize Xi Jinping, for instance, or the Communist Party of China, especially if you've got any kind of audience, that's it. Tickets. The cops are going to show up at your door. Things are going to happen. There'll be big repercussions. We all know that, right? But what I didn't realize is that even the very mildest criticism of very basic things in China, parts of society that everybody faces, even the most very constructive minor criticism will also land you in a lot of trouble. And it made me really realize that this was not the kind of system I should be defending or playing along with, because when does it stop, really? It just stops when you don't talk about anything or criticize anything, and you just have to accept everything. I've always been a very curious person, and I've always tried to analyze and get to the bottom of why things are the way they are, right? I like to see a person behaving in a certain way and try to figure out what would cause that person to do that. Or I see a certain thing and I want to say, how, how did that happen and why did that happen, right? I started to apply my, my logic and thinking to what I was seeing around me in China. And I would start to ask questions of my friends and family as to why is it that people behave in this way? Or why is it that you have to do uh, silly things like, for instance, fill up your motorcycle with a teapot full of petrol rather than, than being able to pull it up to the pump to fill it up. I mean, why would that happen, right? So my curiosity got me thinking. And of course, learning the language, living there so long, studying how to read and write Chinese and everything also gave me a lot of insight into what's going on. So I managed to piece together a pretty good understanding of Chinese society and why things are the way they are. And I also started to get to a point where negative parts of Chinese society were affecting me in a very bad way, and of course, my family and friends around me too. And being a Westerner, I know that if we want to solve a problem, we have to talk about it. I mean, that's just common sense, right? If you see a pothole in the road, you can either ignore it and just drive into it every day, watch other people drive into it, or you can start to talk about it. You can bring it up with your neighbors and figure out who you have to contact to get it sorted out, or at least maybe pull some money together to get it sorted. You know what I mean? If there's a problem, you talk about it first, and then you figure out a solution to it. In China, however, especially if you're a foreigner, if there's a problem, you simply may not talk about it. That's it. If you talk about it, it has to be low key. But if you talk about it, especially if you've got a large audience, and at the time I started to talk about these issues that were bothering me, I had a fairly large audience. Nothing huge, but you know, tens of thousands of subscribers, a big enough audience for people to take notice. Because don't forget, my videos were also being mirrored on the Chinese internet, and they would get much, many more views on the Chinese internet than they would on uh, YouTube. You know, people would just steal my videos and upload them and get, get views type thing. So when I started to criticize genuine problems in China, like, for instance, uh, the kidnapping issue, because in China there's a big, big kidnapping issue, and it's something that I've witnessed myself. I've seen the, what happens to the children who get sold into uh, these child beggar gangs, for instance. You know, I was actually at a, at a place once in a shopping mall, and a child had just been kidnapped, and the... Uh, the grandmother was running around frantic trying to find it, hopefully, and I don't know whatever happened to that, but hopefully it got resolved. The thing is, it's a very common occurrence in China, so much so that parents are petrified to let their children out of their sight. And there always has to be someone watching them. You can ask anyone in China, it's, it's a huge problem. So you see, this is a problem that I can verify is a real problem, but as a foreigner talking about it to try and bring awareness to it, I got a lot of trouble. I got a lot of people attacking me because apparently being a foreigner, it's not my place to talk about or criticize anything with regards to China, which I find absolutely stupid because try to tell somebody who's lived in America for 14 years, who wants to complain about something in America that they're not entitled to complain about it or any country, 
if somebody has moved to another country, they've married a local, they work there, they pay their taxes there, they've learned the language, they live there, for all intents and purposes, they are now a citizen of that country, and they aren't allowed to complain about things that affect them. They can't complain if the water goes off or the power goes off. They're not allowed to. They're not entitled to. You know, it's just a, it's a weird sort of thing going on in China. There's a, an us versus them mentality. And it doesn't matter how long you've lived in the country or how entrenched you are in Chinese society. If you're a foreigner, you're just simply not allowed to have an opinion. So I started to learn that not only talking about politics and religion and things like that, or any sensitive topic when it comes to the government, criticizing absolutely any part of Chinese society, no matter how bad it was, it's just something you can't do. Because you'll be attacked relentlessly. And it got to a point where it just went overboard. It got to a point where people were going after my wife. And a person turned up at my wife's uh, work, actually, trying to look for her. Luckily not the clinic, she was a doctor. They turned up at her main hospital, taking photos and asking questions of the HR, you know, to find out, showing a picture of her, because she was in my videos at the time, picture of her and me asking if she worked there and asking all these questions. Um, people started to write letters to the police and the Public Security Bureau about my wife being a traitor, trying to get her into legal trouble and fired or worse. They started to write uh, letters to my family abroad, random family, people just with my surname, aunts and uncles in Australia and people that were living in other countries who I've never even met or have lost contact with for many years, decades. You know, just crazy stuff. They went after my family for, for what? For raising concerns about legitimate problems that people in China face. And this was before I even became critical of the government. And it made me realize at that time just how bad it is for the people who do have legitimate gripes with the government. Because if they're willing to try and attack your family and attack you for talking about the fact that you can't drink the tap water in China, for instance, imagine what they're willing to do when someone is critical of the Chinese government, who has a legitimate concern because their land was taken away from them or because their cousin was arrested for writing a poem or something like this, or if they're Tibetan or if they're a Uyghur or something along those lines, they have no recourse. And the amount and severity of the tax against them are hundredfold what I was experiencing. Far worse. People lose their lives just for having an opinion in China that goes against the government. And so I realized, first of all, I had to leave China. I have a video on how I left it, so I don't need to rehash. But I had to leave China. And secondly, it was my duty to speak up for those who could not. Because nobody in the West understands just how bad it is for Chinese people who have some kind of gripe with the government. You see, we all think it's easy to stand up for our morals. You know, we have a moral imperative and I, I find that uh, people do it all the time. You pick up a cause, whatever it might be, flavor of the day, you know, go out there and protest. Maybe you hate your current president, so you go out and you can hold a, a sign or your current prime minister and you can hold up signs and show your dissatisfaction. Maybe you want to get involved in some kind of uh, activism when it comes to the environment. You go out there and hold signs or block traffic or whatever. Maybe you want to join one of those, those riots because of police brutality or whatever the case may be. There's always something and you feel like you're morally enabled and you're, you're supposed to follow your morals and stand up and talk about it. And so for most people, they, th they think to themselves from a Western perspective, why don't Chinese people do the same thing? Surely it's easy to stand up if you're dissatisfied with what's going on. And also to people like myself living in China as a foreigner, why don't I just stand up and criticize and talk about Tiananmen Square and the Tibetans and so on? And I'll tell you why. It's because it's not allowed. You can go and protest in most developed countries. And even if you do an illegal protest and you cause a fuss, what's the worst that's going to happen to you? You're probably going to get rounded up, told to leave, maybe arrested and slapped with a fine, maybe like public disorder or something. 
you as a human being, your rights are guaranteed. You're not going to be disappeared. If you do that in China, you will be disappeared. If you stand up with a sign criticizing Xi Jinping or the Communist Party of China, you are gone. That's it. And no, you don't have any rights. They will disappear you and your family will never hear from you again. And nobody else will hear from you again. If you're a Uyghur, simply reading your religious texts, you're gone. You're sent to a concentration camp. And it's true. That's not some weird propaganda. If you have ever run afoul of the law in China, if you've ever had a legal dispute in China, you will very quickly understand just how bad it is for people that have legitimate gripes. You are on your own. And there's no one there to save you. And there's no law there to back you up or give you a fair trial. And it's not just people that are in China, it's people that are abroad, dissidents. If you have an opinion and you go to a free Tibet march or something like that, pictures of you being there mean your family is now in danger in China. I mean, they went after my family for talking about basic, real issues that China faces that everybody in China also agrees are bad things, things like kidnapping and the fact that you can't drink tap water, that sort of thing. They went after me for that. And I'm a foreigner. If you're a Chinese citizen, they do far, far worse things. And they put so much more effort and they have so much more leverage off, like over you. So I hope you realize that the idea of sticking to your morals and standing up against this behemoth of a government, the Chinese Communist Party, is not an easy thing to do. And anybody who does it is incredibly courageous. I hope you now can understand a little bit of the motivations behind why I am more critical of the Chinese Communist Party these days, and of course the very negative parts of Chinese society that are brought upon by the bad governance of the CCP. I can't wait to see you in the next video. And of course, don't forget to join me on Friday for the China show where we talk about what's new in China, all the funny stuff, the soft power hour and everything in between. It's a lot of fun. Please join me. The link is down below and I'll see you next time. Uh, you know, unlike the Chinese Communist Party, stay awesome.